This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And today, as we've had a lot of requests for it, he's going to be breaking down the mad guns of Battlefield 1. I have to chuckle at the um, dainty way that the character handles the thing and sort of squeezes it between his thumb and forefinger. This thing would have zero stopping power. If there are any other games, guns, or mechanics that you guys want to see Jonathan break down, do let us know in the comments section down below, and make sure to subscribe for more videos exactly like this. And of course, if you want to help out the Royal Armouries Museum and continue to support Jonathan's work, be sure to check out the links in the description of this video. Right, over to Jonathan. Um, I suppose the first thing to say about Battlefield 1 in general and about this first weapon in particular is it was never used. <laughs> uh, there are so many guns in Battlefield 1 that barely exist. I almost think of it as a sort of steampunk alternate reality first world war that I'm that I'm playing in when I play BF1. That's out of the way. Uh, the Hell Regal is it, it's probably the least real gun in the game in the sense that there's no real example. There are only some really nicely taken photos of I mean, for all I know, the only prototype. And that's the nice thing about the F1, is it does showcase these roads not traveled, if you like. The Hell Regal is one of these very early attempts at a submachine gun before we really know what a submachine gun is. And it's the, it's got a, um, a box to contain uh, a belt of ammunition. And I don't believe the box is attached to the weapon. Feel free to chide me in the comments if I'm wrong on that, which means it's a light machine gun firing a pistol type cartridge more than it is a submachine gun as we see it used in the game. But I totally see why they went for it. Pause. Borkart C93. This is a, a really, really nice self-loading pistol from the, the 1890s, as the name would, as the designation would imply. Designed by uh, Hugo Borkart, who would go on with Georg Luger to create the Luger pistol. It shares a lot of features. Push button magazine release, we see that being used in the game, with a sort of jaunty kick of the hand to throw out the magazine. That would work, that's quite a slack fit in there. At the time, I imagine it would have been a more sedate, remove the magazine, replace the magazine. Um, speed reloads were not a thing in 1918. And the way we see it used in the game there is one hand, like this pretty much, um, and you see that the mainspring and a lot of the bolt is hanging over the back of the hand. Doesn't look and feel too awkward when you're playing BF1, but in real life, this thing is incredibly unbalanced. Like all things, you could get used to it, but it needed um, Luger's savvy to come in and build all of this into the gun, move everything forward a bit, shorten the barrel, because you don't need that long barrel to put for a pistol, and come up with a, a really good design in the Luger. But he drew a lot of it from the C93. So we've got the here the M1918, Modelo 1918 Beretta submachine gun. Well depicted in the game, I think. I don't know the rate of fire specifically for this, but it stands to reason it would be quite high. The bolt is quite small. Top mounted magazine, as we see there. The reload, again, from memory and from, from the video, doesn't look too bad, but um, as you can see here, it actually, there's a lug on the back of the magazine and it rocks in forward. In the reload animation, it seems to me a bit more like they're jamming it in straight from the top, which wouldn't work. You wouldn't get your gun reloaded that way. But um, yeah, so this this has perhaps more right to be in BF1 than other guns in the game. And it's rumored, suggested that some made it to the to the uh, front in 1918 with the Italian army. I, I would have to err on the side of caution and say this was too late for the First World War, but only just. Was it there? Now, the Bergman MP18 definitely did see use in the First World War, and it's typically credited as the only submachine gun that saw service in the First World War, First World War and the first true submachine gun to see military service. So it, absolutely, we'd expect to see this in BF1, and it's well depicted. The rate of fire, it sort of chugs along, uh, as you'd expect, and, and as it does. I've been fortunate enough to fire one of these. Uh, in fact, if you look at a, the Royal Armouries YouTube channel, we, we did some slow-mo shooting with one a few years ago. 
So the one thing that sticks out is the bayonet, because although the British derivative of the Bergman, the Lanchester, was designed to take the uh, hilariously long short magazine Lee Enfield bayonet, the original German submachine gun did not have a bayonet. So we see it in BF1 with a bayonet, didn't have one. A right, quick pause. I've got I've got to quickly um, whinge about the optional accessories, optical sights, and things in BF1. It makes me sad when I see a Bergman with a sort of Galilean optical sight on it. it just doesn't make any sense. Even conventional steel tube glass lens optical sights for sniper rifles were not super common. But but all nations didn't really get around to issuing optical sights on mass until the last couple of years of the war. This is why I get killed in BF1, because I insist on using period correct setups. <laughs> and I'm not very good. I'm going to pause there. <laughs> Where to start? It's a real gun, as I'm sure people have already Googled. A 2.7 millimeter bullet, incredibly small. And the gun itself is incredibly small, so the actual cartridge length and is tiny as well. Just to get it out of the way, this thing would have zero stopping power. A bullet of that incredibly lightweight traveling at that very low speed is not pulling off headshots at 50 meters or whatever we just saw. I have to chuckle at the um, dainty way that the, the character handles the thing and sort of squeezes it between his thumb and forefinger. So as you can see, as you will have seen from um, other videos on this, I'm sure it is tiny. It's as tiny as it's seen on screen. In fact, I think it's tinier. As to how it works in the game, yeah, they've got that right. Imagine doing this in uh, Under Fire. Press the magazine catch, tab on the base to pull the magazine out, and then with a tiny belt of magazines or something, push in a fresh one, and yes, it cocks as it, as it does in the game. It's a real gun, um, but it's not a real gun in the sense that it doesn't kill anyone. But it might irritate them, I suppose. We have taken objective Edward. The the SMLE is probably the rifle I've used most in BF1 myself. I haven't played a huge amount of it, but um, I tend to favor it because it's British, it's period correct, and I like role playing as a hapless British soldier who dies a lot, which means I'm running around with the, the infantry rifle with no, with no scope on it. We also saw it with a scope. That was used on the Canadian Ross rifle. I've never seen an SMLE with a Warner and Swayze sight on it. Otherwise, the SMLE is quite, quite well done. It looks right, feel, feels right. The user, in this case, I think it's a German, is using the bolt incorrectly. Always between finger and thumb, up, back and out, forward and down in almost, when you see people that know how to shoot a bolt action rifle, especially a Lee Enfield in, with this technique, it's like clack, clack. They could pretty much fire as fast aim shots as a self-loading rifle. But of course, I'm glad that the SMLE is in there. It's iconic for, for, for many reasons. We have lost objective Duff. Okay, pause. The Thompson um, is a definite no-no for the First World War. It, it was very much a product of the First World War. It was this, this idea of a trench broom. Colonel Thompson's, he coined the term submachine gun. And he had prototypes up and running as early as 1919, which is what roughly we're seeing here. The very first prototype was the Annihilator, which is the name that's used in the game. The model used in BF1 with the slotted cooling forend over the, over the barrel is a, a later prototype, and it has features of, of different prototypes. But given that it didn't exist at that time in that context, it's not a huge problem to, to change it up. The lack of a, of a buttstock is, is correct for the, for the time, and even the, the early, the, the model uh, 1921 Thompson, you press a button, the stock comes off. The, the Thompson's a bit of a, an ergonomic nightmare, certainly by modern, modern standards. So the original idea of two pistol grips and the back end hanging out with no stock on it and you look where you're aiming, fits the gameplay of, uh, of BF1. But um, too early for the Annihilator. That's a scout. On the, the Burton or the Winchester Burton, as it's possibly more correctly known, is a really fascinating 
weapon. There's only one that still exists. Unfortunately, there's very little in the way of archival information that survived with it in terms of development, trials, that kind of thing. As depicted in the game, sort of, it's intended as a, a balloon buster, but there was also a ground roll barrel with a bayonet lug on it. Um, so that the, the balloon buster round would light the thing on fire, ignite the, the hydrogen within. The normal bullet would act like a normal bullet. And the BF-1 seeks to depict that um, by having one magazine loaded with the incendiary rounds that do more damage against planes, and one magazine loaded with the anti-personnel rounds as they effectively were. So sort of period appropriate because it's designed in 1917. So, so correct time frame, but there's only one ever made as far as we know. It, it never made it as far as the trenches or anywhere else in the First World War. The twin magazines would give it that absolute, that very steampunky appearance, I believe are just intended to give you more ammunition on board. There'd be no real world reason I don't think to have one magazine with aircraft rounds and one with, with infantry, but it's a neat idea from, from DICE there. Very cool gun to have in the game, but one of the least likely things to get shot by in the First World War. This is a really weird one. Well, I didn't notice when I first played the, the campaign on uh, Battlefield 1 until I checked, uh, shout out to Internet Movie Firearms Database, who had spotted that the Villa Perosa that's in BF1 is not a Villa Perosa. It's the movie prop from the film The Sicilian. Bapti and Co were, and are, a major movie armorer who supply all sorts of firearms and other stuff to the movies. and they provided this, this mocked up Villa Perosa from two Beretta 1938s upside down and bodged together. Here is a regular, not that any of these are very regular because they're quite rare, Villa Perosa. Now you can call it a submachine gun if you want. It's really not. The thing that makes it not a submachine gun is the fact that it doesn't have and never did have, as far as I know, a shoulder stock. So by most definitions, that would not be a submachine gun. Being two guns welded together, it's really too heavy and awkward to be running around with. And of course, you've got a you've got a bipod hanging off the front. You could get rid of that. And um, I guess that's partly why they went with the mock-up version in the game. Although there's been no reason why they couldn't, of course, model this and remove the bipod. So I don't know if that, that was a mistake or a deliberate design choice for some reason, but that's not a bit Perosa. Thanks for watching, guys. That was the Guns of Battlefield 1. I hope you enjoyed my ramblings about the various inaccuracies of those weapons. And I hope you'll join us again for a video in the future. Difficult times for museums at the moment. So if you feel you could spare a little bit of uh, cash, we do have a donation link in the description above for the Royal Armouries. Um, there's even a, a membership program yeah, if you'd like to to go that route, but um, we just appreciate you engaging with our collection. Thank you.